Hey, what's up, fam? Setting up with the Ruby episode. Pretty good, well off. As I've been saying, the season has been really solid. Everything about it, you know, it's kept up at a really good pace. Uh, we're getting to areas and getting lore that we've been wanting for, for years now. But I, I, I like how this episode started with a little bit between Cinder and, and Neo. Looks like Cinder's... I, I think she still has a little bit of manipulation, a little bit of control over her. And you, you can kind of get that while they're discussing. And, and Neo seems a little bit unsure. But still seemingly willing to take the risk to, to get revenge for what happened to Roman. Though I still hope that he's alive. I think he's confirmed dead, though, last time I checked. But anyway, we get a really good flashback with Maria back when she was actually like a young spry huntress. Which I thought was pretty cool. Her, her dual sides were interesting. I, the thing that actually I really liked about her, her character is the way that she moved around where she would throw one of her sides and then I'm guessing it's gravity and not magnetics. I'm just going to go with gravity. It just kind of like pulls herself to her scythe for like quick sudden mid-motion movement I thought was really cool. More than the kind of like added damage and like being able to pull around targets i just like that smaller aspect to it of being able to use it for a way of movement speed and mobility i thought that was more interesting but the one thing i gotta say is when she downed that nevermore it's just why don't you go for the for the kill make sure before you relaxed she should have finished it off would have been a smarter idea to do you know i mean once you kill them they they ash up so it wasn't the best idea to, to think it was dead, especially with someone with their experience. I guess it was just a horrible, horrible mistake. But she was able to use her silver eyes, turn it to stone, which I thought was really interesting because now we're seeing the degrees of way it, the way that affects. Like we saw the uh, the apathy grim, it, it straight just turned them into dust instantly. With a nevermore, it turned it to stone, and then the grim dragon, it just kind of froze it in place. So I'm guessing the strength of the grim definitely matters. With weak ones, instant kill. With ones like Nevermore class, obviously, just straight petrification. Then, I'm guessing that the with the, the Grim Dragon, it means that it's not fully destroyed. Like, it could be undone. Maybe it's more of like a timer instead of like an instant kill. I think that'd be cooler. Uh, and then we get a really good fight with her and like four bandits. Or more like mercenaries, actually, after one of them was talking about how she was hired to take her out. I don't get how... These four, I mean, I guess three of them were kind of useless, and then it was the Faunus girl that was really a threat to her, and um, seemingly her semblance has something to do with, I guess, making more powerful for a minute time span, something like that, and then slashing her eyes with an opening and making it so she couldn't use her silver eyes anymore, and then she was able to put up a good setup, throw her, one of her sickles behind her, and then use it magnetically pull it to her, stab the Fauna Scroll in the back, and then behead her. Man, I'm actually more interested in seeing, like, her story more than this one right now, to be perfectly honest. Like, it's weird when you get, like, really cool flashbacks and, like, older character stories. And, like, I'd rather... I'd rather see them do stuff. They have... They seem to be kind of more interesting than, you know, the what's going on now. Though I'm, I'm fine with continuing to plot along. But, I mean, I'm not... Why aren't they using the like the weekly Shonen Jump manga spot they got to to, to freaking extend out character like background and lore stuff like that? I need that's what all the like the side stuff like to quit doing stupid Ruby Chibi and, and do like cool lore and background and like flashback exploration. Do stuff for like younger Crow or or freaking uh, or younger Maria something like that. That'd be really interesting. Anyway. Before I start rambling, we finally get to see the city, and they're they're all hanging out, and you meet Saffron, one of Jean's sisters, and her wife, and and little kid. I don't think they named the kid though. I either they didn't name him or I missed it. But the the rest of the episode went by kind of quickly, very very softly. It was just kind of like brother sister, like teasing and back and forth, but mostly on uh, on Jean's expense. And them getting ready to try and go to the to the military base, trying to figure out where what they can do. They're still trying to go to Atlas, and it doesn't seem like it's working out for them all that much. And that's probably going to be the rest of the story arc trying to get in. I'm this is 
I'm saying I'm just gonna drop it now because I think that's gonna be at some point once they get there. I think we're gonna get Penny back, and I'm I'm hoping that's the case. I miss Penny. Penny's cool. I don't know. I, the rest of the episode was just kind of like, okay, cool. We meet one of John's sisters. I was actually more interested the, of seeing the the picture of all of John's sisters than just the one. I mean, this one was just like, okay, cool. You meet one of them. You know that the whole thing where John's sisters used to they used to mess him a lot. Obviously, he's the youngest. He's the only boy, so he probably got screwed with all the time. We see that in the picture, and it's gonna be cool once we get the, uh, once we eventually see the other ones. So that'll be nice. When I went solid episode, obviously the the first half was a lot more interesting. I did like seeing that um, Maria was inspiration to Crow, so a character who was really cool helped inspire another really cool one. I like that. Uh, I really enjoyed the flashback. I, I wish that the the character that that beat Maria was someone more more valuable, kind of like uh, have them hyped earlier, and then it turns out to be like some character people talked a lot about but you know it's not a big deal she's outnumbered she just fought a nevermore but whatever as it be it was it was nice to see that and uh just that badass fight and then her like i said i really liked her her movement ability like f usage and fighting style with her sides so that's cool anyway uh nice chapter really liked it i liked the the layout and the the background and the lore that we got as well as set up for more Silver Eye stuff from Ruby. Getting finally to this nice city. I'm, though I would I, I'd want to get more of this uh, more serious stuff. I'm hoping the next couple episodes we might get some some more mayhem. I hope it just doesn't be like another ruined city. And maybe it's more like a conflict with the military or something. But anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Tell me in the description what you, you thought of the episode. Do you have anything you want to you wanna add that I might have missed that you really liked? And uh, hopefully I can get you to like the videos, subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content, check out my other videos, and appreciate everyone who's already subscribed. But otherwise, thank you very much for listening. Bye.